Now in order to render this in color, I need to prepare values. I've got to represent the chair, the light side of the chair, and the middle value side of the chair, and the shadow side of the chair. So I have to mix up something with color in order to get that. Now, I've given myself the best chance I can by uh, using orange, which is a lighter version of this crimson red, and dark umber, which is a darker version of the red. So, I'm making a red shape. I'm going to make three separate values here, one for the light, one for the half tone, and one for the shadow. So I already know that my half tone is going to be the crimson, because that's the color of the chair. Now, that's one value, but as we saw, we've used two markers in the, in the middle value. We had two markers on the go. So I'm going to put my very darkest marker on this piece of plastic. And I'm going to take my crimson marker and just work it in there. And I will get a darker color of red. It's like working from a palette when you're painting. Now, so I can go from a little darker to lighter. Now, for the orange one, I don't want it to be orange because um, it isn't really orange, it's a red chair, but it's going to have some red. So I'm going to have to pick up some red off of the plastic and get a darker version of the orange. Because sometimes it's not enough that you overlay the marker several times. It's not enough. So you sometimes have to mix up a color that doesn't exist or that you don't have. You could probably buy a color. Now, I'm looking at this color and it no longer seems the right, t the right temperature. So I've warmed it up. So it means I have to put a little orange on that middle value side as well. And it's my brightest side. It really tells me what color this chair is actually going to be. So that's that value. So I'm pretty happy with that contrast. Now my shadow side, I'm going to have to maybe put all three. So I'll put down, because I want to have enough warmth, because shadows are warm. They don't look quite right if they're too too cold. And sometimes though, during the day, they are cold because they're reflecting the sky. So the blue of the sky, the blue and the purple of the sky. And then I'll put on my darkest value. I might have to put a second coat of the red. I'm not sure. seeing now that I'm getting this contrast. Okay, so I'm going to start where I know it's the darkest, same way as I started before. It's darkest up here, and I've got my cross etching, so I don't have to worry too much about, about my strokes. Now I know it's getting lighter down at the bottom, so I might... And I wouldn't leave the white of the page in the shadow because the shadow is holding this together. Another thing to notice about the markers is that the longer you leave them on the page, I've got a damaged nib here, so I gotta be a little careful. You might be very careful when you're putting your caps on, but the longer you leave the marker on the page, the darker it will become as well. We also looked at um, going over and over. That makes it darker too, but for sure, it gets darker the more times you go over. Um, some brands of markers, it doesn't do that. But with this brand, the Prismacolor, which is the one I prefer, I'm going to leave a little bit of that red showing there so that I have a little bit of that. And I'm going to leave a little showing there. And I'm not going to go all the way across. I'm maybe just going to go like that. That looks pretty dark, but it's not going to stay this dark. So I may have to go back and uh, fiddle with that some more, but you try not to. You try to be just very quick with it and not worry too much. So now I'm going to go. This is closer to the light up here, so I don't have to go quite so dark as that side. That side was what was holding it together, is going to be what holds it together. So, 
I want to go a little lighter so that when I do the next part it will show up in contrast because it'll be dark to light from left to right. So remember as long as you have a gradual value it will read. It will read as light and shade. My next area of shadow is over here so I'm start up where I know it's the darkest and as I come down I'm not putting as much pressure on the marker and this shadow, whoops, there's a little shadow there and there. My nibs are a little uh, wonky. Be very careful uh, putting your nibs, taking the, nib, the lids off and on because um, they do get damaged quite easily. Now I'm blending with the orange because I don't want it to be as dark as that. And now see I've picked up a little bit of the red on my orange so I was able to get that little value contrast I wanted there. And here, if I want, I can put this on here. Remember I had done that as one of my values and I didn't use it here because I wanted that to be the darkest. So now I can pick this up with the red and just go a little bit darker in there. Maybe I'll get some, and I can leave my stroke showing, that's fine. Then you have to, um, clean your marker after you mix like that or put something underneath remember they bleed so you have to clean your marker just by scrubbing it against a piece of paper now I want my middle value on the front so I'm going to put the orange down first and I have a feeling it's gonna look more attractive if I go from left to right like this and let it look a little lighter in the middle. I'm going to cover that corner because it is a, a dark color that I'm doing. So now it's just a little bit lighter in the middle. Now I'm going to go across this way and it seems like I'm chopping. I'm, I'm not chopping. I'm just going carefully there and there's a shadow in the center but I, I think I'm going to mix it watch this baggie though because it it can um this stuff can get off your on your hand the heel of your hand and then it becomes a big stain in your rendering so you've got to watch that be careful that gives me a little bit of that and then i don't mind having a little bit there too because i have some con contrast okay and then this was a shadow I didn't put in. I have to keep remembering to put down my orange first. That's become part of the temperature of this. So if I miss it, then the whole temperature of what I'm putting on will be lost. Okay. Now the top part, it, I can start with my orange, but it's not orange. It's, oh, I've got another front part. So I'm going to wet that with the orange. I'm going to go up from the bottom. Oh, and I like that little key line there. I'm going to try to keep that there. And I'm going to go, this is another middle value. So I wet it with the orange first and then go down from the bottom with the red there. And now the top. And remember for the top, I use the orange and I pick the red up off the plastic. So I'm going to put out some fresh red. You never know how much you're going to need. So put that out and I'm going to wet it with my orange. I'm going to try to leave some white here. Remember the top plane, you really try because you're going to it will keep it from looking cut out and stuck down. My chair won't look like it's been cut out and stuck down because there's more white of the paper around it. So it's like a works like a common color. And I'm gonna just come across here and I ask myself, do I need this red? I, I think I need a little bit here, just where it starts. I can put a little, my orange is a little dry so it doesn't pick up off the plastic as well as it might. Okay, now this is a, a front value, so I have to put some red in there. I'm trying to keep my head out of the way here. But there is a certain excitement 
in putting the colors up that's missing from the grays, I have to admit. But the grays are, if you can get it to work in the gray, it will work in the color. It, it won't work, it doesn't work that way then. And it led to having the right colors. Don't forget when you do that, you have to clean your marker. Otherwise, now when I try to go on the top here, it's going to be too dark if I don't do that. And I'm glad I've got some of the white of the paper there and I can leave some more. Okay, now I want to put a cushion up, but I want to make sure that this cushion has some of my colors um, that I'm going to be using on the floor. I'm going to be using some browns, the sand and the light tan. So I might actually put a little bit of that color in here. I've got the light tan now and I want to put some some stripes in. there and it's okay if I get some on the chair itself it just gives it a little bit of um, harmony your color a little harmony in the shadow part of the cushion this is going to be darker so I'm using some burnt umber or burnt sienna burnt sienna there's some burnt sienna so that puts that color in shadow then I need a little bit of shadow on the green. So, see, you have to sort out what your colors are going to look like before you can put shadow values in for them. In this case, I don't know how I have it. I never use, I hardly ever use green, but I have green here. For some reason, I had enough colors of green to add the shadow colors in. And then I want to introduce some of my my red. Or should I introduce orange? We'll try the orange first because that's not going to give it much go. So I'll put a little red in. The reds may be a little dark for that, but. I've got a little my little cushion and my legs are going to be brown dark brown so I've got two colors of brown I've got this sienna and you see the outline is making this so easy for me because I don't even have to stay within the lines the lines are so strong so I can't this has got to be one of the hardest things to get across is how what a lifesaver putting these outlines on is. And I could have even gone stronger with my outlines. These are pretty, pretty conservative outlines.